Okay, so under the surface is a heist that a lot of people seem to dislike uh, in terms of selling it especially, and I understand why. It kind of sucks, uh, but yeah. So just like the other videos, just coming about any assets, including zipline. I'm not a fan of the zipline personally. I think it's a bit overrated, but um, I'll explain why a bit later. Anyway, they, there are three main entrances into the building depending on where you start. So you can go in through that way. Uh, you simply run up this bit here and then you mask up. Uh, you go up here, mask up, jump across that, and then you can get into the second floor. Uh, you basically want to be masked up on this ice like, as soon as possible because the entire like inside of the building is secure area, so there's not really any point in being unmasked. Uh, you can mask up here and then climb up there. Be careful to not look at that like bar there that sticks up a bit as you try and climb up because you will just jump and look like an idiot. Um, and then finally, you can climb up this way. Uh, if you get here a bit late, be careful because there is a guard that can look out that window and will see you climbing up that you have to be aware of. But um, yeah, just make sure you look around before you mask up and then climb up. And... No guard. Pretty cool. So once you get up here, you probably want to go to the roof straight away. That's why I would recommend either this way or the other way up over here. Uh because both of these have ways directly to the roof. If you go the other way, you are on the second floor, but there is a staircase that takes you to the roof pretty close to it. Um, so from the roof, you want to deal with the security in all of these rooms straight away. Also, it's worth noting that from the roof, you can check through here, and as you can see, that's the security room there. You want to take out the security on this map as soon as possible, because the cameras are really annoying. There are like 45 of them or something. It's a really high number. And um, you really just don't want to deal with it. So the skate room can spawn there where I just showed it. Uh, the other door on that side is a staircase that goes to the bottom floor. Uh, over here we have two more rooms. This one's a server room and this one is the break room. These are all random by the way. Each of these rooms can be random what they actually contain. So each time you play this you want to check all of these rooms to look for the server room or skate room straight away. Uh, you also want free bones. You want free QR codes before um, you go down to the bottom floor. And if you care about getting the correct Uma painting, you want to go into the server room to grab the spectra photometer, spectra of something, the camera. You want to grab the camera. Grab the ghost camera. Uh, if you don't have this, it, you cannot tell which painting is real and you just have to guess. Uh, if you don't care about getting the correct paintings, then. Um, just don't grab it. Uh, there's a couple of ways into here. You can have a drop through there and then drop onto that bit. You can cut this one and then drop onto that bit. However, those both seem to give fall damage when I do them, so I tend to do this one instead. Although fall damage doesn't really matter all that much, so yeah, you can shrug in like that. I'm also going to do all of these rooms with the cameras turned on for now, just so you can kind of get an idea of how to do these if the cameras haven't gone down yet. So from here you can open this and then go around. Uh, also, Guards do not care about this bag. You can just leave this wherever you want it. Which is kind of useful to know. Also, these doors block line of sight and you can stand inside them. So if you close the door while standing inside it, nobody can see you anymore. Which is kind of useful. But yeah. So if you have the camera and you already have one of these rooms open and you see one of these pendings with like this cube like things in it, uh, just drop it in front of it. We'll come back to that later. Uh, also, as soon as possible, you want to find the There's a guard. Uh, security like box thing um, because that allows you to get rid of the security bars. Also, if you find this janitor in the hallway, highly recommend grabbing him. Highly recommend grabbing him. Unless people start walking towards you like that, then I recommend not grabbing him. <laughs> and we'll be grabbing him later instead. Uh, you can throw him into any of these rooms, just make sure you close the door, it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so once you do that, I'm gonna head back to the roof. There are there, there's, there is a way into every single room on the top floor. So from here, you just need to go down here, and then once you're in this vent, turn around and face like the entrance. Break this, drop down, and then just go underneath both these lasers. Turn off. Rooms done. It's really that easy. Like most of these rooms are incredibly easy if you go through the roof. Thought I heard something. You can do some bullshit like that. This game has pretty cool movement in terms of stealth. Uh, I honestly really enjoy the movement in stealth. It allows you to do a lot of goofy shit like that. 
Uh, this is another room where you can take fall damage if you aren't particularly careful about it. You can avoid fall damage by carefully edging down the edge here. Uh, this is kind of just a pain, to be honest. I would probably recommend just taking the fall damage. Uh, to be totally honest, because you can accidentally trip the alarm by landing on the floor there if you're not careful about it. But um, yeah, so on this side, God. that's the manager going into his office. Uh, so on this side of the gallery, so keep in mind that was the side we came in on, and this is this side. Uh, there's another circus there. This one goes up to the roof. So I definitely recommend remembering that and just using it because it's pretty useful. Uh, There's a guard. Guard. I'm just going to leave the manager to do his thing for now because I can't really get to him while he's in his office with all the guys nearby. So that's the other side and then this is the final room on the top floor, which is this vent. Drop down and don't worry about the vent hitting the lasers, the game doesn't care and neither should you. This one can be tricky if you get the timing wrong, but basically you just want to wait for the this laser to disappear and then jump across like that and jump across here. Jump across here, jump across here. The timing on that might be a little bit tight, but if you feel a bit worried about it, you can do this instead. I'm just going to wait for it to change again. Uh, if you don't think you can make it in time, you probably can, but if you don't think you can make it in time, you can simply jump across like this and then just wait here. Wait for the laser to change, wait for it to change back, and then jump across like that. And it's pretty safe to do that. Um, just obviously make sure you hit the jump. If you don't hit the jump, then you're in bit of trouble. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that that black... That black box on the wall there is the security thing that we need to disable. Watch the guard. Um, so... I kind of want to get to it, but there's everyone near it, so I can't really do anything about that right now. Uh, now that I've done the top floor there, I will do the manager's office. Uh, if you only care about getting the mission bags, uh, also, here's my last QR code. There's one of these phones inside every single room, by the way. So this room, the two rooms over there and the room over there all have a phone in them. So you can get free QR codes pretty easily. If the manager walks into this room, just grab him from behind the desk. Nobody, nobody will know. Um, yeah, so if you only care about the mission bags, uh, the Uma painting is always E4, E7. The Vicario paintings are either E3, E5 or E6. It'll always be two of them, so... You can use that to figure out which room you need to be in and ignore the other room. And this safe is essential. You need to open this safe because it contains the USB that you need to disable the security on the Uma pinning. If you don't do this, you literally cannot get the Uma pinning. Uh, so make sure you open the secret safe and grab the like $300 or whatever that's in the safe. Uh, and now I'm going to go disable security because... I've waited too long and these cameras are starting to piss me off a little bit. So I'm gonna go quickly do that and then I'll see if I can grab the janitor and throw him in a room somewhere. That window's closed. Whoops. There's a guard walking up behind me, it should be fine. Uh, I'm just gonna kill him rather than like doing any of the fancy exploits that I like to take him out without, you know, killing him. Uh, because those are bugs and I assume they will be patched in the first update whenever the update wondering. eventually you comes. Any uh, me, have you? I have and I kind of want these videos to be future-proof, so even though I've shown a couple of the ways to, uh, or I've mentioned Two of the ways that you can take out the security guy without actually killing him before. I'm not going to use them in future videos because, like I said, I want these, video uh, these videos to be future proof. Uh, Janitor is here. Sometimes a security guard does walk into this room and stand right there, so be careful about that. If you get this guy, you can just throw him in here, and that's fine. Uh, you can also get him when he's over there. Uh, if there's no guard nearby, you can just grab him and then throw him into like one of the side rooms over there, or the side room over there. Um, 
So as you can see, the thing is there that I'm looking for. It can be on the wall there, it can also be on the wall over there as well. So you need to check all three walls to find the security thing. And now I'm going to speed up the video because I need to stand in circles for like a minute and a half or something stupid. I don't know how long it takes. This should be the last one now, so uh, I'm going to grab at least one bag from each exhibition room just to, uh, oh God, this card's been really long, just to give you an idea of how to uh, how to deal with each of these areas, right? So. So you get an idea of how to um, move the bags out because there are different routes you can take to do this and each one kind of depends on the current situation or where you currently are so uh, none of these paintings are the one that we want because it was in E6 not E5 the C5 was in it yep uh, so I'm going to just grab this one instead uh, so there's two ways you can go if there's no guard in this hallway and it's safe to go for the staircase, I would recommend just going for the staircase because it's completely safe. Uh, if there's a guard in this hallway and it's too dangerous to try and go to the staircase, you can also try and go around like this instead. Uh, guard. And then just be careful about the way you go here. This guard here will always use this vending machine and then go back the way he came from, which was over there. And then from here, if you've opened this door already, you can go through the door or you can go over there. Now, if you have the zipline bag, the zipline goes from right here, where I'm currently stood here, where this ping is, to that dumpster all the way over there. Now that sounds really good. Because uh, it takes the bags literally to the end. However, guards in this hallway are looking out this window because they can just stop and look out this window. We'll see bags being moved this way. Uh, and there's a guard that patrols around outside somewhere. Is that him? That's a civilian. I don't know why he is. There is a guard that patrols outside. Uh, I can't find him, but he does exist, I promise, and he will also see bags moving along the zip line, which will force you into search. If you're not ready for it, that can be a problem. If you're at the end of the heist, it doesn't matter, but um, I would recommend either leaving bags underneath this window here um, or throwing them all up here. Uh, the other alternative is you move the bags into this staircase and then you take them all the way down here. Also, shoot this vent. Uh, be careful not to shoot straight through it because the lead guard does stand in front of these vents and stare at them sometimes. So if you shoot straight through it, you might accidentally kill them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can also move the bags down here, leave them around here-ish, and then you can unlock the star and start moving bags out this way. But this is a bit... It feels a bit iffy sometimes, but you know how it is. Um, so yeah, as long as you've got three QR codes earlier on, you can go down here and start this one. And the QR code doors, uh, also be careful with this vent. It sometimes makes you slide when you go through like that, so make sure you're ready to hold backwards as soon as you start going through this vent. There's a guard that sometimes stands there, there's a guard that sometimes stands over there as well, looking over here, so you have to be careful about this hallway. Um, also, the lead guard can just walk through this hallway as well, so going through this vent is kind of a bit risky, but um, is he about to... No, he's not. Okay. But yeah, if you want to get into E2, I would recommend doing it this way. Go through E1, and then there's a bar at the back of E2 over here. 
by the back of you one over here that takes you through to you. Uh, these things, by the way, are just motion sensors. They don't see you if you are not moving. So I can stand in this. Nothing happens. Uh, but this one's really easy because the door takes you straight to the power switch. Just turn it off. And then over here we have uh, E3 all the way over there. This room is just statues, by the way. There is nothing essential in this room. That might change in future updates if they increase the RNG a bit. But um, right now there is not really any reason to go into E2 unless you want the extra loop. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go back upstairs to keep moving the bags upstairs. Uh, so that you can get a bit of an idea. So... This is where the camera comes into play. If you open this, it will immediately set itself up. This will scan the painting and then it will tell you if it's real or not. Uh, I know in advance that this painting isn't real because I've had to restart this already. Uh, if it isn't real, it will say not authentic. If it is real, it will say it is authentic. So we'll go over here. Watch the card. It's that simple to move the bags that way. Uh, it's a card. And then I just want to wait for this guy to move. So this is the real one. I don't need to scan it because I already know it's real. Um, plug in the flash drive, pick up the painting. If you don't care about getting the real painting, you can just ignore that step. You can literally just plug it into a random painting and just leave with it. It doesn't really matter. The game only cares that you have one of them, but the um, the value of the painting is determined based on if it's real or not. So I do recommend getting the real painting if you care about money. If you don't care about the money and you just want to finish the heist, uh, done. So that's that. I already got one from E5 and then E6 over here. I'll go back for the bend, why not? No, I'm not. <laughs> So is this the real one? So you can see there, it's got this big stain on it. Um, that is the indicator that it's a real painting. This is the one that you want for the objective. The other ones do not count towards your objective. Uh, I might actually just be able to go all the way around. I take that back. I can't just go all the way around, actually. Uh, I lied, I can go all the way around. But yeah, uh, as long as you, by the way, as long as you don't cut the glass, you can leave these doors open. The guards will see cut glass and probably broken glass as well. I've never really tried breaking the glass and seeing if they see it, but um, yeah, if you lockpick them, it doesn't matter. So that is one painting from each of the top four exhibitions. And now I will go do the circles because that's this video again. Circle simulator, oh boy. There's a vent here as well on this staircase as well. Guard over there. I find the security in E3 easiest to disable um, by going this way. Because uh, it just allows you to jump all the way around here and then go like that. You can probably do it the other way quite easily as well, but this is the way I've always done it. So yeah, you can just go around there, jump around there and jump onto here. In fact, that's probably faster actually. I'm going all the way around here, but um, look at you, that's how I do it. I have a system and my system works. Anyway, I'm going to speed up the video again. I will be back in a bit. <laughs> So, 
Uh, E3 is probably the simplest to get the bags out of because uh, it literally is just uh, Jesus, why. Omnipresent guards, or machine guards rather, that's a cool bug. Anyway, E3 is kind of easy because you can literally just take the bags up the stairs. The stairs are literally right there. So this is the correct pending, so it has the splatter on it. As you can see, the stairs are right here. I can just run straight up. And that's how you can get the bags out of E3. Uh, if there's a garden near there, you can also try and go the long way around. I'll show the long way around next because it's the cl it's the fastest way from E2 and E1. So it's kind of your only real choice if you're in those exhibitions. Guard. So for E1, you can take the paintings and statues. I keep saying pin. I think I've been saying paintings this whole time, but it is also statues. There are statues in this place. Um, Guard over there. You can take the paintings. There's Ooh, there's a guard there as well. I'm not going to go that way then. I'm going to have to wait a minute. Pretty cool. But yeah, you can take the paintings back through the vent and then up the stairs, and it's not too difficult. Uh, and because E2 is connected to this gallery, it's exactly the same process. You just take the bendings through E1 and then through this vent. You can also just throw them through the vent like that. Uh, although the lead guard might be able to see them if you do that, so you might have to like go through them and throw them against the wall. But uh, yeah, so then you go up here. And now comes the fun part. Doing this without uh, the zip line is something that people consider annoying and difficult. And you know what it is? It is annoying. It is kind of difficult. But um, it also is what it is. So there's a few ways you can do this. Like I said, you can bring the bags all the way downstairs and then try and slip out that door. However, I think one of the easiest ways of doing this is to just do this. Literally just throw the bags off the roof. It's kind of like using the zipline, but not quite as far. Yeah. Some things to note is, like I said, that... Oh, that bounce off. Uh, there is a guard that patrols around outside. I don't think the guard is actually here this time, which is strange. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like the guard is actually here. There's normally a guard that patrols this whole kind of area. And if he's there, he will see any bags that you throw down there. But he'll also see any bags that you zip line across. So it doesn't really change anything. Um, which will put you into search. Also, people can see out this window. Oh no. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Now here comes the fun part, the difficult part, getting over here. Did you see how difficult that was? To be fair, I'm kind of playing that up a little bit. That can be more difficult depending on how the civilians are pathing, but if you just wait, like if you just pay attention, if you're just observant, you can really just walk past them like that. I can just catch a timing while there's nobody here. It's not difficult. <laughs> it's really not. Um, if you catch the wrong timing and you get caught, then um, it's a problem. But yeah, also if any civilians walk over to this bench here, just grab them and then just throw them over there. Nobody will see them. Um, other than that, it's pretty much it. Like you can do this for all the bags, just throw all the bags down and then move them all over. And that's kind of just the heist. Civilians do spawn infinitely, by the way, so you can't control this outside area. They will just keep respawning. Um, which does mean you can get some pretty, like, hilariously big piles of civilians. But, um, obviously it's not something that, that is sustainable unless you keep someone outside just controlling the whole area. Um, also, the other problem with the zipline... Did I mention this earlier? If the other problem with the zipline is if there's a guard there and you use the zipline... People will see you and call the alarm. 
you need to be like incredibly like observant of this particular window because if you're not he will see you and call the alarm and i think the only way to stop that would be to shoot him through the window like you'd have to jump off the zip line immediately get back on it the other direction shoot him through the window answer the page i hope nobody hears the glass breaking hope nobody is near his body when you kill him and then hide the body uh to put it simply uh the zipline kind of sucks in my opinion i think it's a bit of the hype it is useful if you don't really know what you're doing um but i think if you play this heist with the zipline a few times and like it just starts to become more hassle than it's worth especially when you just want to get the heist done and that's it um why did it end instantly what the fuck anyway uh like I said, getting the bags out is the hard bit if you don't have the zipline. Uh, there is also the dumpster asset. The dumpster asset is absolutely nuts. Highly recommend it. Um, the dumpster gives you so much more like free reign in terms of how you want to move because it's somewhere you can throw the bags in from the gallery. And... It, like the worst thing that happens with it is sometimes you throw a bag in and the game decides oh the bag's not in this and then it respawns it outside the dumpster so you have to go outside and throw the bag in yourself that is the worst thing that happens and it's not that bad because sure the civilians are patrolling but it's pretty manageable if you just look both ways and pay attention like if you're moving the bags to the van it's just a faster way of moving the bags to the van basically you still have to deal with civilians if it misses the dumpster it's just, just you don't need the zipline you really don't need the zipline just be patient, just be observant. You could say the same about the zipline as well, but I think the zipline has more potential to fuck you over completely than just moving the bags normally, honestly. Feel free to disagree with me on that. Personally, I feel that uh, the zipline is a bit overhyped. It's useful, sure. It also has the potential to fuck you over if you use incorrectly, just how the house is. Anyway, that'll be it. This will be my last video before I move, and then I will probably do more of these after moving. Um, so, thank you very much for watching, and I will be back at some point to do some more of these.